What's up everyone, Take Down here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be ranking every Eminem album. Let's get right into this. So for this video, not only am I gonna be ranking all 10 of Eminem's studio albums, but I'm also gonna be ranking Infinite, Curtain Calls, The Hits, and Shady XV. As you guys can probably tell, I'm a huge fan of Eminem right from the beginning, so I'm super excited to make this video. Especially with his surprise release of his album, Music To Be Murdered By, which came out earlier this year, his 10th studio album. Nobody expected Eminem to drop this album, it was a surprise release, so I'm super excited to see Eminem moving forward having him do more surprise albums like this. So for me ranking the albums, I'm gonna start off with his earliest album, Infinite, and work my way up to his most current one, Music To Be Murdered By. So up first with Infinite, Infinite was released in 1996, and at the time it was a great album. Of course, he was competing in the 90s with people like Will Smith, but he really had a lot of great flow on his tracks. The most iconic song on this album was also named Infinite, and his flow was amazing, his wordplay on that song was amazing, and it was the best song on that track in my opinion. This album as a whole, because I'm ranking his whole career, I'm not going to rank it too high compared to his other work, so I'm only going to rank it 3 out of 10, comparing it to all of Eminem's other albums. It's not necessarily the greatest in my opinion. Next is the Slim Shady LP, which was released in 1999. This album here, he talks a lot more on his struggles, not only coming into the rap game, but struggles in his life with his girlfriend Kim at the time, and also his children and his mother and different things that happened in his life from his childhood all the way up to his current life. So it talks a lot about his past and how he's working through it. It includes songs like If I Had and Rock Bottom, which are really emotional, and he really talks about a lot of his struggles of his whole life and what he's had to do to get to where he is right now. This album, in my opinion, because it talks a lot about his past, it's really emotional, and the wordplay is awesome in all the songs. I'm going to say and rank it as a 6.5 out of 10. It was, in my opinion, an awesome album. Next is the Marshall Mathers LP that came out in 2000. In my opinion, this album here had a little bit more of a dark meaning behind some of the songs, but it still had a lot of great songs nonetheless, including Who Knew, The Way I Am, and The Real Slim Shady. This album here, with those songs along with others on this track, are amazing and with that being said I'm gonna have to rank it pretty high I'm gonna rank it 7 out of 10 because this album even though some of the songs were a little bit more dark and sinister he still had a lot of other great songs on this album so 7 out of 10 from me next is the Eminem show which came out in 2002 it includes songs like till I collapse say goodbye to Hollywood and soldier which were awesome songs and it really talked a lot about his feelings and what he feels like, especially with Say Goodbye to Hollywood, how he felt he was treated while he was in Hollywood and how he didn't want to be a part of that. And everything on this track was awesome and it had a lot of great meaning behind it. So I'm going to rank this album as well as the last one also at a 7 out of 10. The next album is Encore, which came out in 2004. In my opinion, comparing it to these other work from the past, is a little bit of a downhill spiral in my opinion. It's not as good as his previous work, but it still did have a few good songs on it, like Just Lose It, where he did talk about and make fun of Michael Jackson a little bit, not only in the song, but also in the music video, which the music video was awesome, the song was great, but it also included Mosh, which he takes jabs at the president at the time, which was George W. Bush, and he does mock him a little bit as well. So this album here, even though it's not as good as his previous albums, it still had some pretty good songs. I'm going to rank it 6 out of 10. The next album is Curtain Calls The Hits, which was released in 2005. Basically, it is just a compilation of Eminem's greatest hits, which I'm a huge fan of, but a lot of people might say that I shouldn't be ranking that just because it's a compilation of his greatest work. But in my opinion, it was a great album. All of the songs on it were awesome. Of course, it's his greatest hits album. Other than FAC, a lot of people, just myself included, don't understand why he put that on his greatest albums track. But nonetheless, the songs on this were awesome. The album was great. And this was the first album that I ever purchased. Not only the first Eminem album, but the first album in general that I purchased. So I'm going to rank it pretty high and I might be a little biased here. 
because I'm a huge fan of Eminem and I love this album. I'm going to rank it 8.5 out of 10 because this album, in my opinion, was awesome. Next would be Relapse, which was Eminem's return album, which came out in 2009. Now, at the time, a lot of people were happy that Eminem was back in the game. However, a lot of people did not like Eminem's new sounds. But me at the time, I was a huge fan of it and I loved this album. It included songs like Crack a Bottle and Beautiful, which were awesome songs. They were very deep and meaningful songs and they were one of Eminem's best work. This album here, I'm going to rank it pretty decent. I'm going to rank it 7.5 out of 10 and it was awesome as a return album for Eminem. The next album is Recovery, which came out in 2010. Now, for a lot of people, this is not Eminem's greatest work, but in my opinion, there is still a lot of songs on this album that were awesome, including 25 to Life, Almost Famous, and the iconic Love the Way You Lie. Since this album here included a lot of songs which I'm a fan of, I'm going to rank it pretty high myself. I'm going to rank it an 8 out of 10 because I did love quite a few songs that were on this album. The next album is kind of a throwback to Eminem's early albums, and that is Marshall Mathers LP2, which came out in 2013. In my opinion, a lot of people expected Eminem to go 100% back to his early albums and try to pick and try to come up with songs from there, but he just didn't. He did have a very previous work S to a lot of his songs, but they were not like the early albums, which I can honestly respect because I didn't want him to duplicate what he did in the past. I wanted to, to take what his previous work kind of was and what he was going for with his previous albums and trying to come up with something new, and that is just what he did. It included songs like Survival, Berserk, and Rap God, which at the time held a world record. This album here, since a lot of people did not like it and were not a fan of it, I was, and I'm going to rank it pretty high, I'm going to rank it 8 out of 10, just like the last album. The next album is Shady XV, which came out in 2014, and it celebrates the 15th anniversary of Shady Records. And the songs on this album did not only include Eminem, but they included those that were signed to Shady Records. It was a two-disc album. The first disc included new songs from Eminem and those that are signed to Shady Records. And the second disc included the greatest hits of not only Eminem, but those were signed to his record as well. It included people like 50 Cent, Yellow Wolf, D12, and a lot more that are signed to Shady Records. So this album was awesome. And it also included the first look to Lose Yourself, the demo version, which was awesome to hear what the demo version of Lose Yourself would have been compared to the one that was released back in the day. This album here was very iconic for me and very special because it was not only Eminem, but those that were signed to Shady Records as well. I'm going to rank it 8 out of 10 as well. The next album is Revival, which came out in 2017. Now, a lot of critics hated this album and gave Eminem a lot of heat for it because they just were not a fan of it, and I just don't understand that. There was one or two songs that I just didn't like on this album because of the meaning behind them, but there's still a lot of great songs on this album, including Walk on Water, Frames, Castle, and A Rose, along with a lot more. This album, in my opinion, was awesome. It showed that Eminem still has it, but a lot of people still hated the album, which I just don't understand. So for me, I'm going to rank it 8.5 out of 10. The next album, Eminem released only months after Revival as a surprise album, and that was Kamikaze, which was released in 2018. Basically, because of all the backlash Revival received, Eminem decided to release this album Kamikaze and basically take aim at everybody that dissed his last album and he started to diss people like MGK, Mumble Rappers, and a lot more. Way too many for me to name, but every song on this album, in my opinion, was fire. It was amazing just to see Eminem dissing all these people that took a lot of heat and criticized his work and just destroy them on an album. Some of my favorite songs on this album were Stepping Stone, Not Alike, Kamikaze, and of course Venom, because I'm a huge Marvel fan. All of those songs were amazing, but in my opinion, every song on Kamikaze was awesome. I'm gonna rank this album the highest, and that is 9.5 out of 10 from me. It was an awesome album. The next album is Eminem's 10th studio album, which he released earlier this year, and that is Music To Be Murdered By, which was released in January 2020. 
This album here was another surprise album that nobody was expecting because Eminem did not announce it. And I absolutely love when Eminem and other artists do this because it gets a lot more attention because a lot of people are just not expecting another album. And then here comes another album and everybody is loving it and it gets a lot more attention. This album includes Those Kind of Nights, which features Ed Sheeran. I love seeing Eminem and Ed Sheeran on tracks. It's awesome. It includes Godzilla, which Eminem beats his previous world record with Rap God with Godzilla. And it's awesome to see how fast Eminem can rap. And it also includes Darkness, which takes kind of a dark twist, but it's still a great song. With this album here, I am a huge fan of every song on it, just like I was with Kamikaze. And it seems like with Eminem, with the longer that he stays in the rap game, he keeps putting out great albums and it's proof with the last two or three albums. He is still on fire and he still has great songs and great albums that he's putting out there. So I see Eminem in the future releasing, of course, another album. I honestly give it one or two years because I was not expecting a 10th studio album. Music to be Murdered By was a great album. I just was not expecting it. So since there's a lot of great songs on this album, I'm a huge fan of all of them. I'm going to rank this one the highest. I'm going to rank that 10 out of 10 from me just because... It's an awesome album. Eminem's last two albums, Kamikaze and Music To Be Murdered By, are my favorite Eminem albums of all time. And I really feel like Eminem is going to produce more in the future. Not only is Eminem hopefully going to be featured on other artists' albums, but I feel like Eminem's still going to be releasing more albums in the future. Just give it some time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me ranking every Eminem album. I'm a huge fan of Eminem. I think that shows with this video. And I was just happy to share this all with you. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. I'm going to leave this video here. Please take care. Peace.